Well guys, it's late. That's why my glasses are on. But AMD just put a wrap on their keynote at Computex and guess what? A lot of the leaks and a lot of the rumors were really wrong. So let's jump into what was announced and what to expect in the future with actual announcements now that they've happened. So leaks are fun and we do like to talk about them and we do love to speculate on them and we, well, that's part of what we do here. But when the official news is out, we also like to bring you that as well and that's where we're at. So we'll wrap up a few things towards the end and definitely going to kick things off with the least talked about thing at the event, which was Navi. So AMD poise Navi as the future of the Radeon branding. So the idea here is that this is not really what we've seen before and they're going with the new naming scheme, the Radeon RX 5000 series. So the idea there's 50 is in there, 50th anniversary, eh, kind of clever there I suppose. But gone is GCN. What they're running now is RDNA, so Radeon DNA. So it's not GCN, it's running a new architecture, newly designed engine and we'll get a little bit more into that in a second it is running on pci express 4 and it's packing gddr6 memory so they've definitely beefed that up it's got a new compute design a new cache design and increased ipc and clock speeds We're looking at 1.25x performance per clock along with a clock rate increase so we could be looking at closer to those 2000 megahertz numbers now that they're on 7 nanometer and I only say that out of speculation because the Radeon 7 is able to run around 1800. So if they're able to get more, it looks like it could be good there. Along with an IPC improvement means that you get more performance with each one of those clock ticks. And we're also looking at a 1.5x performance per watt. That's definitely something people are going to be wanting to see. Lower thermals or more headroom on, you know, you get a trade-off there. But I'm going to take this moment, I'm going to step aside and I'm going to let you see the demo that they showed with the Radeon RX 5700 series card running up against a 2070. So yeah, the 5700 series, definitely not the RX 30 series, so 3080, 3070, 3060, those, that's not happening. So that's out and it's definitely the 5000 series and this is the 5700 series running Strange Brigade up against an RTX 2070. Hey, look, uh, I'm very super excited to uh, show the world today Navi running for the very first time a real live gaming demo and benchmark. And on behalf of all the AMD engineers uh, that have worked on the Navi product family, we are super excited to get this in the hands of gamers very, very soon. So behind me, you'll see that Chris over there has already started the benchmark running. This is Strange Brigade. It's running on two GPUs. On your left is the RTX 2070. And on the right on the screen is our brand new Radeon RX 5700 series GPUs. Uh, Strange Brigade is a co-op third-person shooter game. It's designed to uh, play with your friends. You can uh, fight minotaurs, uh, fight some scorpions, you know, uh, also solve puzzles and blow stuff up which is my favorite part. <laughs> I love blowing stuff up. And then you can see as the benchmark uh, comes to a close here, you'll see the scores right behind me shortly. Um, this is what I'm very extremely proud of our engineering team. You'll see that on average, the RX 5700 GPU beats our competition by roughly 10% performance in this very early edition of the game demo. So I'm super excited about that. Thank you. <laughs> So that's been the demo and where it stands there, it is a little bit faster in that game, but as I've alluded to in the past, especially with the interview with Gordon Maong over at PC World, I think about 10 people are actually playing that game. But if you're looking to pick up a Radeon RX 5700 series or 5000 series, they'll be available in July and they're going to give you more details on that on June 10th at E3. So moving things into the more important measure and the real reason that the keynote lasted as long as it did, we're talking about Zen 2 or third, third generation Ryzen. So of course we've got 2x the cache size and twice the floating point performance and we're looking at a 15% IPC uplift and that is confirmed. And according to AMD, we're looking at double digit improvements over the Ryzen 7 2700X when you move over to the Ryzen 7 3700X. Now we have a video uh, that they did where it demonstrates the Ryzen 7 3700X up against the i7 9700K running Cinebench R20. Let's take a quick look at that. All right, Robert, what are we gonna show? 
So we've got Cinebench R20 running, and I was thinking back to my time as a reviewer, looking at AMD's K7 and K8 architectures, long time ago. And we've used Cinebench for over 15 years to reliably and quickly test the performance of a processor. And now we're on Cinebench R20, which came out just last month. And what you'll see on your right is the Ryzen 7 3700X versus on the left, the Core i7 9700K. And as we turn through this realistic, ray traced scene, you may notice that the Ryzen 7 3700X is uh, quite a bit faster. In fact, it's about one third faster than the competing part. And that's really a testament to the compute performance of Zen 2 and the density that the seven nanometer Zen 2 architecture brings to a chip. Fantastic. And uh, it, it's just a monster performance. And I think if content creators really, really want something special, that's just 65 watts. This is a beautiful, beautiful part. And uh, uh, our competitor is still going. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just let that tick through. Are we done? <laughs> Almost there. Almost. <laughs> Almost. OK. It takes a little while. All right, there All we right. are. All right. Robert, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you. you. So moving things into the Ryzen 7 3800X, that's eight cores at 3.9 gigahertz base and a 4.5 gigahertz boost at 105 watts. The 3700 that we mentioned previously was a 65 watt part and was boosting to 4.4. So they did do a video comparison of the 3800X against the 9900K in gaming running PUBG. So we're gonna to cut to that and then right after that, we're gonna see a video of the Ryzen 7 3700X paired with the RX 5700 series running on a bandwidth test compared to a 9900K and a 2080 Ti to see how that looks in bandwidth. So let's take a look at those real quick. Both of them eight cores, 16 threads. And the great thing about it is this beautiful PUBG demo that we built and recorded to reliably test the performance of this game. This is a tough game to benchmark, but we've done it. And what you'll see is that both processors are about the same. And in fact, that's ideal. I know as a gamer that I want a processor that gives so much performance to the GPU that it's out of the way. I don't even have to worry about the fact that my GPU is being bottlenecked by the processor. So the Ryzen 7 3800X, if you are looking for a chip that gives you the performance you need for those high-end GPUs, this is it. It's the best game in town. And if you add in all the other technologies, Lisa, like Gen 4 and 7 nanometer, it's the only choice. Fantastic. All right. So this is actually the world's first PCI Express Gen 4 ready gaming PC and demo. So Robert, let's show our crowd. Absolutely. So we built two systems. On your left, a PCI Gen 3 system, and on your right, exclusively and uniquely from AMD, a PCI Gen 4 system. And this is running the upcoming 3 d Mark PCI Express feature test, which is designed to answer the question, how much extra graphics performance can you get from PCI Gen 4 versus Gen 3? And the answer is clear, and it's large. Up to 69% more performance for graphics from having PCI Gen 4, which you Let's can take a only look at get that bandwidth. from AMD. Let's take a look right? at that bandwidth. So we're running about 25 frames per second on the AMD system and about 14 frames per second on the, the Intel system. And this is just a really great demonstration of what Gen 4 can do for gamers. And you think about how that might help games in the future. Fantastic. Robert, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So after all of those demos, they rounded things out by talking about the Ryzen 9 3900X. Now that is where they took the chip and added in that second chiplet there. And now you've got a two chiplet system, but we're looking at 12 cores, not 16 here. So 12 cores, 24 threads with a 3.8 gigahertz base and a whopping 4.6 gigahertz boost. Uh, running at a 105 watt TDP, which is pretty impressive. Now we do have a video that we recorded while they were doing the demonstration showing the 3900X versus the 9920X from Intel. So 12 cores, 24 threads on both platforms, one being HEDT, roughly double the price of the 3900X. And well, let's take a quick look at that. Final trick. I'm going to take socket AM4, AMD socket AM4 against Intel's HEDT socket. This is a $1,200 processor on the left versus the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X on your right. And we're running Blender, 
which is trusted by many content creators to evaluate 3D rendering performance. And it's just a really great content creation tool. And what you see from every box is a processing thread. And as we come to the finish, the difference is clear. We finished in about 32 seconds versus the competitor's 38 seconds. And that's about an 18% performance improvement for AMD. And we're going core to core, 12 versus 12, which means Zen 2 is simply faster. Fantastic. Yeah. Woo! So after all of that said and done, let's talk about pricing real quick. We're going to run down the stack. We're going to do the 3700X 8 core processor for $329. So the same price as the 2700X, but you're looking at all those improvements. Now the 3800X is still an eight core, and this is the one that I was expecting to be right where it is at $399. So that's where it is, $399. Now the 12 core 3900X is really the buy here. It's like the good, It's if, if I was looking to upgrade, this is pretty much what I would be looking at. So you're looking at a 12 core 24 thread part for $499. And really can't argue with that pricing. I know a lot of people were expecting to see much cheaper and hoping to see much cheaper. I mean, I would too, because I'll be buying one for that system right there behind me, and it'd be nice to have that chip in there, but or for a little bit less. But still, I think it's a good value at that price. And but they did they didn't mention it at the event, but we did get word from AMD on this being the six core parts. I know we did a video less than 24 hours ago talking about leaked performance on those chips and potential pricing being really low and I'm just here to say it's not quite going to be the case but the 3600 which is a Ryzen 5 at 3600 6 core has a 3.6 gigahertz base with a 4.2 gigahertz boost and it's going to come in at $199 so 65 watt part 199 and then the Ryzen 5 3600X is a 95 watt part with a 3.8 gigahertz base and a 4.4 gigahertz boost for $249 and all of the parts can't speak for Navi just yet because they haven't given all that information. I'm sure we'll get that at uh, E3. We'll get the release date on that. But we're looking at July 7th. And I know that is something we've reported on quite a bit. And everybody thinks July 7th is crazy because it's a Sunday. But apparently AMD don't care. And, well, that's when it is. Now, I just want to take a minute before we wrap up and say that I did have an interview with Gordon over at PC World, and I'll link that down in the description with the timestamp, where I predicted that the maximum we would see would be 8 cores at launch. Well, I was wrong. It was 12 cores, but I did say that that 8 core would hit 4.6, and it was going to cost $399. So, I, 2 out of 3 ain't too bad, but... uh Love to hear your thoughts on this one down below. Are you pleased with the final numbers, the final display from AMD regarding Ryzen 3000 series? I'm for one, it hit right where my personal expectations were, so nothing really threw me off, but I know there's a lot of people that were expecting some really, really crazy low pricing. And as usual, and there's quite a few people that said in the comment section, sometimes if it's too good to be true, Perhaps it is. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you keep it locked right here. We'll keep you up to date with any information that we find going forward. And remember, don't make purchasing decisions based on leaks. Just have a little fun with them. We'll catch you in the next one, guys.